Peter chapter 5 uh, first Peter chapter 5 and verse 2 shepherd the flock of God so the uh, first thing for us to know is that it's the flock of God that the people belong to God uh, we might be spiritual overseers we might be um, you know we might be uh, given authority to um, to watch over to teach instruct whatever but um, the thing is that uh, God looks at uh, them as people who are redeemed by his blood so uh, you know they are his purchased possessions not our purchased possessions right so a shepherd the flock of god which is among you serving as overseers and uh, and then it says uh, how and how not to you know not by compulsion but willingly uh, not for dishonest gain but eagerly right and uh, not as being lords are not being bosses over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. So we see that, um, you know, these are how not to do it, right? Saying um, not by compulsion, not for dishonest gain, and not as being lords over those entrusted to you. And it's very interesting, you know, we see that, first of all, that the people, um, you know, the church uh, are the flock of God which means they're not our property, they belong to God. And it says here that, uh, verse 3, that entrusted to you, you know, it's it's as if the Lord is you know, saying, okay, I'm entrusting these, um, my flock, to you. Right? And uh, for their betterment, that you would lead, that you would, um, you know, you would instruct, that you would uh, inspire them, motivate them, coach them, uh, and beautify them, and, uh, you know, encourage them, correct them, and bring them to a place of uh, maturity, even as, uh, even as you also, you know, go through the same thing, right? So, uh, so you see a wonderful process here. And you see that the, the reward uh, comes from him. The reward comes from the Lord. It's not people's approval or it's not uh, anything of that sort, but the, the reward comes from him, right? So I was just reminded of that. And um, and even as the Lord places us in, uh, in you know, places of, places us in positions of uh, influence um, to lead others for his glory, let's, uh, let's keep this in mind, right? So let's, uh, let's pray. And um, and maybe commit ourselves and and align ourselves, you know, to to this uh, truth of scripture, to this instruction in scripture. Right, uh, Father, we thank you that even as we've read right now, Lord, uh, people are your flock. Lord, you are the chief shepherd, and uh, and uh, as um, the, the 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 people we see, the church, Lord, they are people redeemed by your precious blood and your purchased possessions, and they belong to you, Lord. Um, we are yours. And uh, Lord, we we thank you that you counted when we counted a privilege, God, that you choose to entrust people, Lord, to us, Lord, uh, to oversee, uh, Lord, to guide and and to give oversight, Lord. And uh, Father, we thank you for this awesome privilege, God. And we know that the crown of glory comes from you, and uh, that our reward comes from you, God. And um, this master. Uh, we just pray that we will do this and um, yes, that we will be careful um, not to do it out of compulsion or, or for dishonest gain or uh, or to do it as being lords um, over them, as being bosses over them, God, but uh, to do it in the right way. Lord, we ask for wisdom. We ask for understanding. Um, we ask for divine guidance, Lord, um, and how to do this right. And, uh, and not to do it in a way that um, that compromises values that compromise that that results in Lord um, in being detrimental to the flock and to the leadership God so we we pray that um, you will enable us empower us and lead us on this path of uh, Lord the way you led Lord um, we thank you we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus matchless name we pray amen amen Awesome. Okay, so um, yeah, that's something that I just uh, feel that we we should um, uh, you know take a firm grasp of, um, even as we uh, even as we look to the Lord as He places us in positions of leadership, and and this holds good, you know, even 
even in other settings, you know, I'm talking about not a church setting, but uh, or a ministry setting, but even in other settings, uh, as as leaders, yes, there is a contract or an agreement uh, or a desired set of expectations, right, from the ones who lead. But uh, uh, but you know, when, when you look at it, there are people who are, you know, created in God's image, and uh, and. And the fact is that the Lord does not, for his disciples, the Lord does not give the servant leadership uh, or, you know, the leadership, the kind of leadership that he wants uh, from his disciples. He doesn't give that as an option, right? We, we saw that. Um, he said that if you want to be leaders, you must be this, you must do this. So, um, so while we are in, you know, like, like Daniels and Josephs in the, I'm talking about people who are out there, you know, in, uh, uh, you know, in their professions and business and so on, or maybe government who are out there and in that setting, um, in the courts of Nebuchadnezzar, you know, like, so to speak, uh, among magicians, among sorcerers, uh, among those who dabble in the black, uh, you know, in the dark arts, uh, that we would, you know, still consider this, that Lord Jesus has given us that example. And so it's a walk of wisdom, right? It's a walk of wisdom. It's a walk, of, it's a daily walk of, uh, uh, you know, walk being led by his spirit. And and we will see that the wisdom of Dan, the wisdom of um, the God of Daniel is far superior. And um, the knowledge and understanding that he gives you know, Daniel, Shadrach, uh, Meshach, and Abednego is far superior, head and shoulders above uh, the wisdom of the world, right? Which is, which, which is, um, you know, uh, or any of those, um, the wisdom that comes uh, from above is far superior, right? So, um, and it is, um, it is to redeem, right? To reconcile, to um, to stop the works of darkness, to advance the work of the kingdom of God, right? So maybe see that. Okay, um, so let's continue with where we stopped uh, last class. Um, so we were looking at, um, you know, as uh, when, while considering uh, the whole aspect of leadership and a, and a Christian leader. Um, so it's Christian leader is not just a tag, you know, like, uh, okay, I'm a leader and a Christian, and this is how it is. But the fact is that uh, as a Christ follower, uh, our leadership changes, right? And, and we looked at how, um, as leaders, we we are called to raise up other leaders, and uh, and and that's part of the calling of a leader to raise up other leaders and nurture other leaders. And we saw, you know, the stage uh, or some stages that the uh, that people go through, or um, that we can uh, we can identify and we can take people through when we nurture uh, others as leaders. Right, the six stages, you know, the preparatory stage, growth, and then ending at the transition stage. Uh, we also saw <clears throat> towards the end that um, while we create opportunities for uh, creating opportunities develops leaders, creating opportunities for others and um, opening the doors for them to step in to serve, um, you know, that's one way of creating leaders. And also what will really um, enable the, uh, you know, or like a catalyst, which will speed up the, uh, the nurturing the leader is the you know the the three three aspects that is feedback and encouragement and correction right uh, so feedback without encouragement can be very uh, you know it'll be like finding fault over and over again but feedback and encouragement without correction uh, is also it, it, will, it will also not serve the purpose right because uh, uh, you're not actually you're leaving out the truth aspect. Uh, which is um, hey, there needs to be change. There needs to be correction. So that will also develop the leader because without correction, the weak weakness goes um, unchecked, uh, unaddressed. But when there is um, correction, then uh, whatever is a weakness is brought to the light, and uh, and hopefully the person will work on it. And and so therefore, um, you know that changes and. Uh, and becomes uh, instead of a weakness, it is it it becomes a, a area of strength itself, right? It change there's a change. Okay, so let's um, uh, look at um, yeah. I think we're going to look at the decision making within the organization. So um, we we looked at 
organizing people, organizing ministry, organizing finances, uh, and so on. And uh, you know, we're going to look at uh, what will enable us to make uh, um, good decisions. Um, you know, uh, fruitful decisions within the organization. Um, some helpful uh, tips for that. Uh, but before that, I just thought it would be good if we can look at, you know, as leaders, um, some important areas for us to grow in, you know, personally as leaders, uh, as influencers, right? People with influence. So for us, uh, so this is uh, something which uh, John C. Maxwell shares uh, in, uh, I think it's Million Leaders Mandate. Uh, I think that's the resource. Let me just check. Um, yeah, Million Leaders Mandate by John C. Maxwell. So it's it's quite helpful uh, and it's easy to remember. Uh, it's the four C's. Like, um, so let me just share the thoughts with you. Um, okay. <clears throat> okay, so... Um, four... Okay, you have it on the screen. So four C's to... You know to grow in in leadership so these these are you know things easy to remember so uh, these are foundational things as well so while we remember to do this we also can uh, you know can develop this in others you know we looked at several you know there's an entire checklist uh what we can develop in others right uh, bring strength in others so um you know it could be summed up in four you know broad categories so the first one is competence okay or ability um or knowledge so competent when we say competent competence it's uh, addressing the area of knowledge you know what we have learned it's also addressing uh skill you know, what we can do um and third area of uh, experience in the sense what we have what we have picked up uh, along our you know professional journey or ministry journey right experience so uh competence would encompass all these three areas right to what we have learned what we do and what we have uh, what we uh, have experience in so for us to grow in competence right it's it's quite important that we that we do this um and not stay at uh, the same level right um, so to continue to grow and growth becomes uh, kind of automatic when we are continuing to receive from the Lord and when we when we continue to receive and we when we are and we are you know intentional right about it when we make that our mindset right um, well it will it make us uncomfortable um, yes it will um, because we are stepping out of what of the familiar and the known um, and uh, like all learnings we have to you know go through that phase of you know you know grappling with maybe new things grappling with new skills um, but uh, this is something that uh, we need to you know it's a continuous uh, thing in our life continuous process in our life um, which will make life so interesting which will make life um, you know uh, 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 I mean, something very, very um, interesting and something to look forward to as well, you know, as we grow in years also, right? And and it's a very important mindset to have, you know, like um, if we read Second Peter and uh, which is Second uh, Peter and the last verse, Second um, Peter uh, chapter three and verse 18, the last verse in that epistle, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. Okay. So uh, Peter says, grow in the grace, you know, in and whatever grace involves, you know, grow in the uh, experience of unmerited favor, grow in the, uh, you know, the grace of God with regarding, you know, regard to gifts and what he is freely extending, uh, grow with the grace of God, which which is talking about divine empowerment and um, and divine virtue and so on. So grow in that grace and says and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You know, grow in this this experiential knowledge uh, of Him. Uh, don't stay in the same place. Grow. Okay, there's so much more. So therefore, grow, right? Um, and uh, so in in growing, you know, we we, um, we we come to a place of being even more effective, and uh, and it 
uh, you know growth spiritual growth is uh, is essential you know we don't we, we uh, there's no staying in the same place actually you know it's either we we slide down or we we continue to grow right so um so that's the that's how we are designed that's how god has designed us so okay so this is the instruction that we have which means that for every believer you know for every uh, one who is a believer who's a child of god every child of god uh, this is the exhortation that we grow in the grace grow in the knowledge of our lord okay so um so when we talk about competence we're talking about all that knowledge and skill and experience and so on you know grow in the in the gifting right um you know how do you use your gifts uh, in this whole leadership function how do you use your, uh, your, you know, your, your relational skills? How do you? How can I grow in that? Right. So, um, so many aspects, right? Communication. You know, yesterday we were looking at, um, uh, you know, in office we were talking about communication and effective communication and and uh, how it's so important and uh, what are the filters? You know, what what blocks effective communication and so and all that. You know, as leaders. So, um, you know, how can we grow in that? Right. So, um, so don't uh, look at growing in com uh, competence uh, or growth itself as something that's intimidating, as something that is tiresome. You know, uh, take take small steps. You know, that's all there is. Right. If we can be, if we can learn something new, if we can, uh, you know, and it can be some piece of information. It, it's and it can be a new skill. It can be, you know, something that we reflected and um, upon, and we're saying, okay, this is part of my experience now, and uh, you know, we leverage that. Well, that's good, right? Um, so Peter doesn't say, okay, now you need to, you know, make a quantum leap now. You know, uh, you you knew only so many books. Now you need to know this by heart. No, it is grow in the knowledge, grow in the experiential knowledge of God. Right? And uh, you know, and and as our spirit, you know, as our spirit um, becomes stronger, right? In the sense, uh, as we increase in our capacity to receive from the Lord, you know, the more and more the time that we we spend with Him, we see that we are changed. You know, there is change, there is transformation, and in in all aspects, there is change. Right? With Moses, it was a physical change. You know, his face was lit up because of the glory of God. So we see that. There cannot be but change when we when we are in the you know drawing from the presence of God and, and we see that in Second Corinthians three right beholding as in a mirror Second Corinthians three in the last verse uh, are being transformed you know there is change deep change drastic change transformation into the same image from glory to glory so you know there again we are being changed and it's a glory to glory you know it's it's something that's growing. So, um, so don't be. Let's not be intimidated by change. Let's not be, you know, tired because of uh, because of uh, the need or the expectation to change. Right? It can be in a small measure, and and this will continue to grow, and uh, you know, gain momentum. Right? Okay. Second um, Timothy. To us, to what you have heard from me through many witnesses, entrust to faithful people who will be able to teach others also, teach others as well. So that able, that ability, uh, is again competence, right? So be effective in it, grow in it, and uh, and do that, right? And there's no need for comparison when it comes to competence. There's a natural tendency to compare, you know, as human beings, we compare and say, okay, I'm not as uh, you know, I'm not growing as fast, or I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not doing as well as uh, this person. But the thing is, only comparison that we can compare to learn. I can compare to see, oh, that's great. I can be that way. Now that's a healthy comparison. Um, but we don't compare to put the brakes on our growth, right? We don't compare to uh, to stifle our growth. We don't compare to just come to a standstill, right? Um, with regarding our desires and our expectations you know for growth so um so healthy comparison is always good but we know the moment we cross the line the holy spirit gives us a check it's not a healthy comparison anymore we stop it okay um okay the second area is for us as leaders to grow in confidence right um so when we are uh, what 
you know, confidence, when we say confidence, we're not talking about self-reliance, right? But it's a healthy confidence where we realize um, who we are, right? We realize, uh, we come to that understanding of our identity, our, our position in Christ, what we have received from him and uh, what we can be in him and all that we have already become in him. Now, now that's a healthy realization, right? Not realizing that is, is, is unhealthy, right? So now that's a healthy thing. We come to the place of understanding, realizing, okay, I have so much in me because of Christ. I have become this because of Christ, right? He has, he has taken me out and he's lifted me up and he has placed this. He is, and you know, what we've been studying on Sundays these days uh, in church about authority, you know, all that we have been given uh, because of Christ, because of we are, we are one spirit with him and, and all that, right? So that now that's a healthy Christ confidence. Right? It's not arrogance, it's not pride, it's not boastfulness, it's, it's confidence. Right. So um, don't, um, when we see a confident person, you know, confident in Christ, uh, you know, let's not equate that to arrogance right, or pride. Um, so in ourselves also that, uh, you know, underestimating uh, or lowering our self-esteem um, and saying that, you know, anything that is our saying, you know, something contrary to uh, what we have become in Christ. Now, that is not humility, right? That is not, that is actually false humility. That is not, uh, that's that's fleshly humility. Um, and which is, which is actually, you know, if you say, when you look at it, it's pride because you're saying that who, who or what you have become in Christ, uh, you're nullifying that and saying that I'm not that, right? Uh, saying which is, which is actually pride. So confidence. Um, so confident is, uh, you know, is being able to take that step of faith, you know, uh, and uh, moving ahead in faith, right? Uh, not afraid of the outcome. Um, no, that's that's confidence. So without confidence, you know, we can do uh, this. Nothing much we can accomplish, right? Um, without confidence, because we are not able to take that step and see that the waters part. Right? Take that step and watch God move on our behalf. Right? Take that step and uh, experience the the favor of God. So um, we're not able to do that, right? Because of lack of um, confidence. So yeah. So confidence. When we when we're talking about confidence, it comes from positive experiences. Right? Uh, take small steps. And uh, when you take those steps, and when you, when you have, uh, you know, um, when the results are um, are pa positive, then then result, that it gives a boost to our confidence. You know, these are some practical things, right? Like, um, so, okay, in terms of ministry, in terms of communicating, sharing, you know, uh, simplicity in sharing, keeping it simple to the people. Um, okay, confidence is again built through uh, faith in God. Okay. Um, well, there are uh, different ways by which we we can. Uh, uh, okay, I think Sam, your video is on. Um, um, so uh, there are different ways by which we, um, you know, we. Uh, I'm sorry, I think. Uh, yeah, um, different ways um, by which we, um, you know, the, we are built in confidence, right? We. Uh, we see your faith in God. We have our faith in God, and um, you know when when it comes to you know when it comes to problems, right? Especially the uh, we might have a perspective about problems. We might have uh, you know well we look at problems and we want to maybe uh, run away from problems, right? Problems or you know things that uh, or challenges. Let's say work, ministry. But we would if we would have a perspective of uh, you know, challenges is something that, uh, something to be solved. And as as these being an opportunity for us to put our faith to, to the test, to exercise our spiritual gifts, to, um, you know, to, to bring our skill and to exercise our skill, our abilities and our, you know, knowledge and learning, then to, to solve the problem, then it becomes an opportunity rather than uh, something that 
that is you know stopping us or hindering us you know it becomes an opportunity rather than a hindrance right so um so that's um, so confidence helps us to to come to that place and saying okay let me do this now right um let me let me put the gifts to test or let me put my faith in god to the test let me apply this principle here right so it becomes an opportunity to um to grow rather than looking at it as a hindrance right and that also builds confidence and also encouragement you know when people encourage us when people recognize uh, and encourage meaning you know it's not just saying things um for the sake it's not flattery it's not being um, sincere it's not being insincere sorry uh saying some things just to you know just to make you feel make us feel good but really um you know when it's uh, when it's sincere and when it's an encouragement um mixed with of course uh, feedback and and it, when it's in truth then that also builds our confidence right so grow in confidence take those small steps so grow in competence grow in, grow in confidence uh grow in compassion you know this is another thing you know uh, we can get all technical we can get learn all the processes and we can learn all the methods um but uh, if we lose the compassion uh, that uh, the kind of compassion that the lord jesus had for the people you know, we see over and over again that he was moved with compassion and he reached out and touched them and he healed them right so uh, you know with compassion we we our hearts are aligned to god's heart right god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that talks about love that talks about you know the kind kind of heart that he had for the lost right for people for the lost who who were rebelling for the lost who were ignorant for the lost who were willfully disobedient right so um for us to have god's perspective um is to grow in compassion right not to lose out on that um well uh, we you know uh, i think it's um yeah let me just uh, look at that verse well romans 5 and verse um 5 the latter part of it says because the love of god has been poured out into our hearts poured out in our hearts by the holy spirit who was given for us so we have we have been given uh and we have an ever ending supply of agape god's god kind of love because we are connected to the vine okay let's never forget that you know we 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 can come to a place of saying you know i temperamentally i am this is how i am you know take it or leave it or we can say uh this is how i am you know uh yeah, this sticks me off and uh yeah, this is this is how i am you know rather than you know making such a statement why don't we look at the truth of god's word yeah temperamentally this is how i am this is how you know my ancestors my forefathers have been but me having come to a place of receiving from christ the spiritual reality is that the love of god has been poured out into my hearts by the holy spirit into my heart by the holy spirit who was given for me and i am connected to the vine i'm the branch who is connected to the vine the life that flows in the vine the zoe the god kind of life that flows in the vine flows in me the branch and i bear fruit right the holy spirit is at work in me and i bear fruit um the outcome of the holy spirit working in me and leading me that the fruit of the spirit is love joy and peace and long suffering and and all that faithfulness and goodness so you know this is this is the reality of it right now it needs to find expression uh through my soul through my my mind my will and 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 all that and that's a choice that i have to make right and and the more my mind is renewed the more my my soul is renewed um to the truth then the better it is for the spiritual reality to find expression in everyday life right otherwise it will not find expression right the, the reality is something something great and it becomes a frustration because my soul is not renewed my mind is not renewed to the truth of god so there is no alignment you know there's no acceptance and there's no release of uh, what is 
uh, what is in my spirit right but the minute um, you know uh, my mind is renewed renovated my thinking is changed then the ch it's like opening the floodgates right it's like opening the floodgates for the river to flow the river of god to flow just think of it you know that choice that you make the decision that you make the river flows out you know that willingness well the ability comes through right so uh compassion without compassion it becomes a burden ministry becomes a burden leadership becomes a burden right because leadership is i mean it's it involves people right ministry becomes now uh, it, it ministry involves people so um well if uh, if if you if, if you don't have compassion if you don't have the heart of god for people then people become irritant you know everywhere you turn because your your leadership is going to be you know with people all kinds of people um and maybe difficult people you know um so it's going to be a uh, irritant and day in and day out it's going to be a path of frustration rather than um, you know something that we can enjoy and walk in right and uh, and and how did god have so much love how did the lord have so much love for those who are lost those who are his enemies um you know it's because uh, he saw the father he, he and the father were one and are one right so um, and he has given this to us so we can um, you know have the same perspective uh, right okay so so growing in compassion you know, that's something that um, we we can ask god we can we know we need to ask god uh, as as leaders right um then uh, collaboration right the ability to work with others it's again very important you know because uh, it involves people because we are placed uh, and um, uh, in the body and there are people whom we receive from the people to whom we we give to uh, so to be able to collaborate right to come alongside to meet to interact to network you know whatever words we use uh, but basically to work together right with people right and we also understand that um, god places us there's divine connections god that god you know places us in um, you know i'm sure that you know all of us here we're not here by chance right there's a divine purpose Right. why you, you said yes to okay, doing this maybe it's just for one course maybe it's just for one subject maybe it's just for a few months maybe it's for the entire you know uh, the entire um, uh, course um, but uh, you're in the will and purpose of god you said yes right and there's something happening this there's, there's uh, something happening in you so god brings divine connections in the same manner with other people uh with maybe people who are like minded maybe people who will sharpen us maybe people who will you know maybe you know take us further people whom we can give to and uh, and so you know that that happens god does that strategically right uh, he did that you know with philip philip was uh, he told philip philip go here you know this is desert go there he went and uh, he was able to you know it was a very strategic move uh, it seemed foolish but philip obeyed and uh, therefore impacted the life of this uh, ethiopian eunuch right so we, and when we over and over again book of acts we see those things happening peter you know obeying peter having that vision with robin and god setting up things you know uh, they've already started their journey they're coming and at that very moment Peter has this vision Peter sees this and then there is this knock on the door and then he goes right God setting up and God uh, in his wisdom I mean, it's it's beats our human understanding and thinking uh, how he does that right um and so so many times so many divine and which cause changes the course of our lives you know personally you know looking back I see that um so many divine connections so many of those moments um and it changes the course you know of one's destiny what what we could be doing so and that involves you know uh, people saying yes to god and um, uh, and the connections that he 
places in our lives okay um okay so uh, thinking about people that god has placed in our lives as a potential source of encouragement support and strength uh, well this is important no, no one person will be a channel for all the things that uh, you know, that are necessary and required uh, for us to grow and so so god will you know bring a multitude of you know uh, a lot of counselors you know and uh, and bring in his wise counsel okay. okay right and and similarly also you know for us to give to others as well okay so this is uh, you know, from John C. Maxwell's book, uh, Million Leaders Mandate. And um, I think it's quite uh, helpful for us to remember and to, you know, work with others. Okay. Um, and also, I think this you may uh, know, but I'm just, I just want to go through uh, for, so that we understand, um, uh, you know, the five levels of leadership uh, or the steps, you know, uh, of leadership. Uh, um, well, John C. Maxwell talks uh, about this. And, um, he talks about you know uh, the first level or the uh, step, you know, first step, uh, being one of position in the sense you you are given a formal title, uh, a form you are placed in a formal leadership position, right? And so um, this, what happens is that yes, as leaders we are, we uh, when we are given a formal title and a position, it could be okay people saying that okay. Uh, the organization or the ministry appointing you and saying, okay, you are a leader for this particular function, for you are the one who gives oversight for this particular ministry, or you are in charge of this team. Okay. So now it's it's a position, it's a the, the authority that has been given now, the influence part. Okay, that's the important aspect of leadership, right? The influence. Now it may not extend beyond our job description in such a uh, uh, you know in a such a in, in that step of leadership or in that phase of leadership right um so uh we need to move on to another step you know, from the position or the title of, uh the position of leadership we need to move on to the next step where 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 people um give us the permission or people follow because they they want to you know they are they give that permission so it's it's more of a relationship right uh, so then uh, that's the next step so here uh, and one thing to understand is that um, you know we never outgrow or do away with the previous step Okay, so yes, there is the position, and then you move to the next step, which is uh, you know, which is relationship. Um, and here, you know, uh, it work becomes fun. Uh, they people are willing to be influenced beyond our stated authority, beyond our um, you know uh, the realm of authority that, that the title holds. Right, um, and then so in this. Uh, step also, you know, we we need to move beyond that, which is production in the sense uh, what we bring or the kind of success, um, the kind of uh, fruitfulness that we bring to the you know organization, ministry, the team, right? That's the next step. So we see that okay, uh, you know, there's a solving of problems, there is a you know a reaching of uh, goals, and, and all that uh, would would influence you know, and in this level of leadership we need to come to that you know, we cannot uh, stay in that previous step so we come to that third step which is production or you know results right um and then the fourth step is uh, you know where where we um you know we are developing leaders you know, we looked at that we are where as leaders we are developing leaders so people follow because of uh, what we have done for them. You know, there is. Uh, uh, we are developing leaders. We are developing the skills of others. We are developing the. Uh, you know, maybe people are recognizing the call of God. Maybe people we are leading people to um, recognizing the gifts gifts in them, and uh, you know, you know, we are, you know, kind of pushing them to opening up their lives to the, you know, uh, to using their gifts and so on. Um, so it's it's uh, development. You know, people development. Okay, then uh, another stage would be uh, personhood or where there is respect for 
who you are, what you have become, and what you stand for. Now that's over a period of time, right? Now all this is over a period of time, but we, we, um, as we, as leaders, as we grow, as we work on those areas, and as we intentionally, you know, uh, grow in our leadership ability, uh, this is something you know that we can uh, look at right? as a, as those steps. Uh, as a pathway, you know, in our in our growth, in our growing as uh, leaders, right? Personally, as leaders, right? Okay. So uh, those are some things that uh, just wanted to uh, share as we look at uh, uh, personally growing as leaders. Okay. So it, so we see that it's it's exciting. Uh, it's uh, it, it's uh, it's ongoing. Right? It's ongoing. It's exciting. Uh, it's it's revolutionary. It's very different from how the world looks at leadership, and uh, it's you know it's producing life because you are you know you're allowing the river to flow through you, or river of God to flow through you. So it's it's bringing life, bringing restoration, bringing change. Um, you know, uh, creating uh, a, a place for people to experience God, encounter God. Right. And uh, in ministry, and and also so also you know in a you know in a secular leadership setting, you know as a Christian leader in a secular leadership setting, you know we are we are constantly we are exposing uh, the team or the or even one on one to the wisdom of God, right? The manifold wisdom of God, the character of God, uh, and and that. Uh, that that draws them, you know, that opens the door, uh, or people begin to give permission um, for you to have an influence in their lives, to be led, right? Um, so it 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 moves beyond the formal title, right, and uh, and endears you as a as a as a leader, whom people would look forward to, and they are excited about uh, about following, right? Okay, so we'll. Um, We'll uh, we'll move on to another uh, to the next topic, which is um, okay. Making decisions, it's you know, it's a, it's a shift uh, from leadership and into uh, making decisions within the organization. So before we go into that, so maybe uh, if anyone has any uh, questions or anything that you want to, that you'd like to share on this topic, we could um, talk about this um, before we move on. Any doubts, any questions, anything that you would uh, like to add to? Uh, so you see, you know, uh, I mean, the more and more we we see what leadership is and uh, who a leader is, you see that it's uh, it's very enriching. You know, it's it's very different. It's not uh, like the word would see a leader. Um, it's not self-serving. Uh, but it's um, yeah, it's, it's uh, serving of others. At the same time, you know, solutions, direction, guidance, which is very very necessary, right? Um, so terms like overseer, it's not a bad word. You know, you're overseeing something, uh, and uh, overseeing people who are probably more in experience, older. You know, like Timothy was doing in the church at Ephesus, and um, and all that is a reality. But you see that, um, well, it's uh, it's it's not something negative. It's not something to endure, but it's something to to really enjoy, right? And because you're being led by the greatest leader of all, and uh, you have the greatest leader of all inside of you, the Holy Spirit, who wants to lead. So. Uh, that changes, you know. Uh, there's a shift in uh, whole, you know, the way we look at leadership itself. And I, I, I hope that uh, you know that that shift happens um, or ha has happened for you. Yeah. Um, so, any questions? Anything that um, that you might have to share? Um, Yeah, we, we all have different uh, experiences with leadership, right? With leadership and as leaders, right? And uh, and not all experiences are positive. Not all experiences are good. And so, you know, 
uh, we might have a you know, leadership itself might have a very bad connotation in our lives. Um, so yeah, so uh, so I don't know what your your experience has been, right? Uh, like I've had some terrible bosses <laughs> and I worked for different organizations Oh, terrible bosses. Um, but through it all, it was a learning, you know, through it all, it was, uh, it was, uh, amazing. Um, you know, uh, um, so very different from what we have discussed, right? Uh, the, uh, and, and that's how the world is, right? So you see that, um, and so what, what happens is we, we also work the same way because that is how it was done to us. That is how we were led in the organization. And that is how, you know, you're saying, okay, that's the expectation. Okay, let me lead this way, right? But um, so, yeah, so how easy is it? How difficult is it? You know, all those things. We have, I think, probably a minute. So if anyone wants to share. Yeah, Sam, go ahead, please. Thank you, Pastor. Um, it, so, um, just like the levels uh, of leadership, um, I think there are different styles also of uh, leadership. Like uh, you know, some, I don't know, but I think it's something to do with your own personality because each of us have such different personalities, which are uh, shaped by so many things, our circumstances, our upbringing, etc. So when people go in the leadership uh, place, I, I, what I've experienced, I've experienced diverse styles of leadership, even though uh, now when you put the, um, the five levels of leadership by John Maxwell, when you, when you put them, and as, as I was looking at them, I've, I've had two uh, leaders probably, you know, at the same, uh, maybe, permission leaders like leaders whom you want to follow uh, but then both of them leading in different styles uh, so that's that's something that i wanted to think. yeah so different styles in the sense uh, can you just elaborate on that sir um, um like um so someone um a leader who uh, so a leader probably someone who is like I, I'm, 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 I have two people in my mind, um, and uh, both of them are so diverse, especially in terms of uh, a person. Like one leader who is um, who like who focuses mostly on um, on uh, the big picture. I mean, both of these leaders. I think what makes them permission leaders is. Uh, or uh, for me, uh, why I like to work with them is because they they believe a lot in uh, capacity building. Meaning, mm. you know, they 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 seem to be in a hurry to you know um, like get me up and and they themselves move out. So so mm. so so the training. So everyone who works under them, they're constantly like, okay, I'm gonna do it the first time, but uh, you know. As soon as I've done with the first and the second, the expectation second time you do it, mm -hmm. and 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 that's how um, you know they've, 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 they've set up a certain culture of bringing people up okay. constantly, constantly. So the, and both of them, but one person is, uh, you know, he is so focused on the bigger picture. He's like I'm bringing you up, and this is, but the 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 big picture is this. Like you know, what you need to keep in mind is this. Um, and how you'd get there, like the nitty gritties, uh, I'll just leave it to you. Like, um, I don't, you know, I don't know. Uh, and the other person is, again, same time um, building it up, but then this other person is, uh, uh, the big picture you decide. I mean, eventually the goal is there, but you can somehow, as long as you're going in the right direction, uh, you know, you're headed to that direction, that's fine. But uh, this is how, mm -hmm. like the small, small steps, like, you know, the, right. this other person mm -hmm. believes in, um, and for lack of a different question, uh, like the devil in the details kind of thing, uh, she is most like you know, uh, this is how uh, you do this. Yeah, understood. Yeah. So, so that's just one. Right. Instead. So I was, I was thinking of uh, you know, uh, you 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 know, while uh, they might like depending on so this mm. this leadership styles. So I don't. So that was one thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and also I think uh, leaders also use different methods for, for different processes and different outcomes, you know, um, so that is also there, you know, for for certain, 
uh, I mean, certain functions or certain decisions, maybe a different method. Yeah. Um, um, say, uh, I see your hand. That's add one more thing, Pastor. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. So, so the other thing that I've that I've been thinking about is which um, you know in the previous section where you were sharing the four C's and um, mm. I, well, I completely agree with those four, but something that I find a uh, lacking uh, mm. and and constantly I think uh, probably this this skill was not required so much uh, 20 30 years back mm. but I I think it's required more now is uh, for leaders to really have the capacity to listen or or even create that space to listen to others uh, and then adjust or adapt or even modify accordingly uh, because I think 20, 30 years back, uh, it made sense where uh, leaders were looked as, you know, the source of knowledge, the source of direction. Uh, so there, there were lesser people who were more educated, uh, more experienced, and you needed some answers. We didn't have Google. We didn't have books. So, you know, uh, you could rely on one person to give you direction and show, and this is how it's done. But now with, uh, you know, with information at our fingertips, uh, it's it's uh, I think the style of where relying on one person to know everything and I think that's some, something that's been very revolutionary for me also is when when people take up leadership roles uh, normally the assumption is like I have to be the person who knows it all I have to be the person who's got it figured out and so that's an immense burden for the leader as well as you know if if he carries on with that trend which has been set before us which is you know the leader is someone who has all the solutions yeah. but more and more i don't think that's the case anymore and uh -huh. the new skill that i think is more valuable is where the leader listens and sometimes the leader just says like you guys seem to know what you're doing let me get out of the way i'll just uh -huh. make sure you guys get coffee um you know you guys uh -huh. have what you need to do what you what you have to do uh -huh. uh, and for support i think that's, that's right important. Right. Yeah. 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 I, I think, um, yeah, what you're saying is right in the sense uh, that a leader is uh, not, exp I think it's not a good expectation to say the leader will have all the answers, but the leader has the wisdom to, uh, you know, look in the right place or you know, consult with the right people to, you know, to bring the answers and the best possible solution, you know, in a consultative manner. Um, but the decision making, you know, of course, because accountability rests with him or her, uh, that goes, you know, with the job, right? Uh, say, can we come back after the break and then we'll hear you out, yeah, if you don't mind? Sure, um, sure Pastor. We'll, That's yeah, fine. Okay. Yes, yeah, so it's uh, ten fifty-five. So we'll just take ten minutes. Uh, we'll come back at eleven or five, and then we'll uh, have say share. Okay. Okay. Thank you. We'll take a break now. <laughs> 